In this video, we're gonna completely disassemble this hub motor. This happens to be a crow motor, which is pretty much the same as a QS motor, although what you're gonna see in this video is going to apply to most any electric hub motor. And one of the highlights of this video, the reason I'm taking it apart is because this axle here is a little abused. The threads here, um, I don't even think I need to explain why they're a little abused but these threads are a little abused and I'm gonna push out this old axle, set it aside as a spare. I'm gonna put in this brand new axle and you'll see step by step of how to do that, how to take apart the motor and we'll also show you how to put it back together too. So when you begin to take apart the motor, the first thing you do is take off these side cover bolts. On this motor, it's a three millimeter hex key. So I'm gonna go around, not gonna show it, because you know how to undo bolts. Go around using a star pattern to undo the side cover bolts, loosen the side cover bolts everywhere. There's also some side cover bolts here for, I guess you'd call that a, a flange. It's a rotor mount flange. And so right now I'm gonna loosen the bolts and I'll keep the camera rolling while I loosen the first one. I set it in there, put my hand out here, and hope to crack, oh, it wasn't in there very loose. So we're just gonna go around there using a star pattern and we'll loosen all the bolts and we'll come back and show you some more action after the bolts are out of there. So we've taken off the bolts. This is the side that's gonna need a bearing puller. So I took off the axle nut. At this point, all you're seeing is taking off this, what we're calling a rotor mount flange. And it also has this here, which we could call a wiring harness collar. That's what I want to call it, a wiring harness collar. And I don't know if the other hub motors have this, but it's a real tight fit, I'll tell you that much. Very tight fit. So this comes off like this and keeps the wiring harness nice and tight up against the axle. And we'll come back to this side when we start to put the bearing puller on there. So this is the other side and Going to do the same thing, going to use a three millimeter hex key, go around, take off the bolts. So what I did is I used a, when I put this together, I used a high temperature silicone um, gasket. And it was kind of acting like glue and we had to use different tools to get in there. We tried this small regular screwdriver and it was too big and then we found a, a bit here that was thinner and we were putting it in the crack and getting pretty frustrated. And while I was in the house getting a really sharp knife, our uh, cameraman there used this and put it right on the crack and hit it hard, was able to defeat it. And once he got a little bit in there, we, we now have the cover free. Obviously this is the cover that doesn't need the bearing puller. So this is coming off. So this is the drive side cover. Note that the drive side cover does not require a bearing puller. And here's the flange that has the threads for mounting the freewheel. There's the bearing that I pressed in. I'm going to test the bearing now. I know it's good because it's new and it's never been used. So now we're going to go to the other side. We're going to have the same problem with this pesky silicone gasket. And we'll take it from there. What I did is I made this box here to work on the crow motor. Go ahead and lift it, Lloyd. Because the crow motor, when you set it on the bench, it has the axle sticking out. So this box has a hole, show us the hole. Has a hole in it. And then we're using this uh, part there that I use my hydraulic press to protect the fragile coils, or I'm sorry, windings. So now, what Lloyd is going to do is, he's already defeated the crack, but this is what he does to uh, defeat this stubborn, high temperature silicone gasket. He's cheating because he already had a crack. So he's going to get in there and get a little bit of room, because we need a fair amount of room for the bearing puller. Actually, we need like two or three millimeter for the bearing puller, because it's a big, huge bearing puller, which you're going to see here in a minute. There we go, now we've got enough room. So Lloyd is making some room for the bearing puller. 
Here's a bearing puller here. See, the teeth are quite high. That looks to be like 9 or 10 millimeters high. So this is actually a difficult part. He has to go around and get us enough room under that side cover to get the jaws of the bearing puller under there. So we're going to work on that for a while using a regular screwdriver. We'll be prying it up, us on either side of each other, going around evenly, prying that up and trying to get eight millimeters, try to get those, those bearing puller jaws to fit in there. So what Lloyd's doing now is he used that bicycle tool there, if you could see it, which is a bicycle uh, brake pad spreader. And he is, we've chosen some shims there, which have a really hard plastic. They might be called Delrin. And those shims are the same height as the jaws of the bearing puller. So what he's doing is he uses this um, in lieu of a crowbar. He's using that and he's gonna put in the shim at about 120 degree angles to get just almost enough room to get the bearing puller jaws in there. And Lloyd, go ahead and uh, leverage that so you can see how when you do that, it lifts it up a little bit. There you go. See, he can he can lift it up enough for the bearing puller jaw. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put in the jaws of the bearing puller. So I guess we got kind of lucky. We got the bearing puller in there really nicely. They're in as far as they can go. And they are, they, we've got the screw there perpendicular and everything is ready to go. Lloyd is tightening the bolts. And I'm thinking about putting a zip tie around there, but I don't think it's necessary. Since there's two of us here, I'm not going to use a zip tie. If I was by myself, I would put a zip tie around those arms. Now I did put a big cable tie on there because when I've been by myself, I just felt like it was good to keep it sturdy. So there's some holes in there. I had a big cable tie. So we're going to see how it goes to have a cable tie there. So cut off the excess zip tie. I got a kind of a nice long uh, wrench here. And let's see if this will come off easy for us or if it's going to cause us a problem. So there we go. Nice and smooth. What I'll do is I'll take this wire and put it up like this. If only I had a third arm. All right, coming right off. The wire is getting in, into the act there. So I'm pulling at some point it's going to break free using a bearing puller to pull off a hub motor side cover. Let's see if we're free here. Nope, we're still still using the bearing puller. I could have used a 20 millimeter wrench, but this crescent wrench is a little longer. Still, oh, I guess we're just gonna keep twisting here. There we go. Apparently I can do it with my hand. No crescent wrench needed. I thought I was gonna need a lot of, so. Okay, well the wire's definitely making an issue of itself. What's happening here is that the, the motor wire is getting in the way. And so we're having to use the bearing puller to get it past the, uh, the motor wiring harness, which is in there very tight. But I can do it by hand, and it's definitely coming. The, zip, the cable tie worked nice. Here we go. Get a little tighter now, get the wrench back in on the action. Crushing the motor wiring harness. Are we free? No, we are not. So it's getting a lot of control here. I want to keep that straight. Okay, so 
that you just gave. Okay, that's free, so we're just going to clean this up. So it's free. So what we have here is the, um, the brake side or the non-drive side. This is where the ISO mounts are for the brake rotors. Or maybe it's for the flange, for the brake rotor mounting flange. In any case, this is the brake side. And uh, the plan now is to remove the two magnets from each other. So we're going to be pulling the stator out of the cover. And actually, I referred to it earlier that this axle was abused. The reason that this axle is abused, I had not intended on saying it in this video, is because before I realized how easy it is to pull, to push the two magnets apart using a press, I thought it was a good idea to hammer out the magnets from each other with a sledgehammer on the axle. So what do you think that did to the threads? It abused the threads. And I had to re-thread it, cut it and re-thread it, which had the effect of shortening the axle. So that's not the best thing. So right now you're going to see how simple it is to press the two bags apart because this magnetic field isn't anything you're going to defeat with your hands. We need the hydraulic press. All right, so what we need to have now is four equal size sockets that we're going to rest the cover on. I've got some foam to protect the windings when they fall. I'm going to use this also to protect the windings so because it's going to fall so we want to have a soft landing if Lloyd wasn't filming he could hold the the two things but we want to film it so I set these here I've got the wire out of there where it's out of the way putting the wire up so it doesn't get crushed and I'm going to go like this and what I do is I set these sockets to where it's not in the way of when it goes down because it's obviously the stator is going to get pushed through. I get these where they're not in the way. Okay, so those are not in the way. So the stator can get pushed through. So we're going to put some in our own way. Those are definitely out of the way. Nope, this one's still in the way. So yeah, we got our soft landing. We got the hard collar. And I got hydraulic pressure. And I want to center it. Just move it over here a little bit, center it. it. Appears to be centered. All right. So when this gets pushed apart, it really wants to go back together. So you're keeping your fingers out of the way between the two magnets. There's something creaking. I don't know what's creaking, but I'm going to keep pushing here. And I'm going to get this plastic so that when it does break free, I'm going to jab this between the two magnets to prevent it from... Okay, so... I have no idea what's creaking. It's probably the hall sensors. Okay. Getting ready to jab this under there. Could almost jab something under there. One more. This will prevent us from having to do it again. See, I get that in there. Get that in there, so that part's not going to go back together. Okay, well, now my other hand is taken up, so I'm just going to go for broke here. And as it's coming, all right, so we got this here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shove that in as much as I can. This is a piece of plastic, and I really want to make sure not to abuse the hull. So now we're going to put this on the bench and try to separate it with our hands. So what we did is we used two people, and I held the stator, and my buddy held the cover. And when I had a real good grip on the stator, I held that in tied up against my body, and then he grabbed the cover and uh, jerked strongly and quickly and he just held on to the side cover and it came off easier than expected. Now it's easier to work with. I can hold it with one hand because we just lost half the weight. So we just lost about 12 pounds. So I'm going to take this 
And the plan here is to remove the snap ring. Going to push the axle down that way. The plan is to remove the snap ring, push the axle out this way. There's a shoulder here. If you were to try to push the axle this way, which I've done, it uh, doesn't, doesn't go. There's a shoulder. So snap ring, remove the snap ring, and then push the axle out that way. Here's Lloyd removing the snap ring. We cheated because we used two people, and while he spread it, I put a regular screwdriver under there and pried it out. So here he's going to remove the snap ring. So I'm selecting a sleeve for my press. And I like this really well because there's not much room here. The important point is that there's a cable tie right there that needs to be cut. That cable tie which is going to allow us to pull the hall sensor wires. See how much room I have here. Pull them a little bit away so that the sleeve I use, pretty thin sleeve, is going to go in there right like that. That's what we're going to use to press out the axle. So here's the uh, sleeve going on the axle. The hall sensor wires come out of the way just enough. The plan is here, I have a hole here, which I checked and the axle does fit through. I can just check that real quick. See, the axle is going to fit through there. It's going to drop through. And going to go like this. And you can keep rolling, I'll push it out. Make sure I have pressure here, which I didn't. I would have pumped and nothing would have happened. Okay, so center it to the ram, and this is going to be easy. And triple checking that I'm pushing out the right size, and then centering that. This comes out really easily. Again, double checking that your snap ring is out. Oops, a little not centered here. Being centered is best. Okay, so here it comes. It's going to come out. There's a pin in the axle, a centering pin. Lloyd's telling me I'm in the way, in the way of the camera. Okay, so pushing it out, thinking here, what's going to happen is the axle's going to push through, and this stator is going to be up in the air unsupported. So I suppose I'll hold it hold the statter, but Lloyd's telling me my arm's in the way, so what to do? I'll hold it like this, and we'll just hope that my arm's not in the way. Is my arm in the way, Lloyd? He's shaking his head now. So, coming through, and that axle is probably going to drop. There it goes. Okay, now we're going to put in the new axle. This is the axle I just pressed out. It has an, what I'm calling an alignment pin in there. That needs to be in this. This is the shorter axle I'm putting in. So get a proper size prying tool, pry out the pin, and ideally it would fit tightly. This one is a little loose, but once it gets pressed in the axle, it's not going anywhere. I'm using this to protect my windings because I have crushed windings before. So put that there. So when I press it in, the windings are prevented from being crushed. Um, center it, and more or less put in the aligning pin, more or less. Once you start pressing it in, it's going to find its way there. So I'm just checking that it's centered right now. The ram's coming down. All I need to do here is two things need to make sure that I have a smooth operation of the hydraulic press and also I'm going to make sure that the hall sensor wires stay out of the way and make sure that the aligning, alignment pin stays centered. But it's self-centering so here it goes going down and in my mind I'm just quickly thinking am I pressing it in the right way? And I am because this is the wire side and this is the shoulder when you know when to stop. So here I am pressing in the axle. Really easy. Pressing it in, the alignment pin, the line, go down to where it's flush. Maybe give it just like a little kiss of pressure. And it's in there. So two things you want to remember when you put it back together is 
that you've pressed in the axle all the way. And we're going to get the uh, zip tie on there that keeps the harness in place. And of course the snap ring. So I guess that's three things. So here I'm putting on the uh, cable tie. Sometimes I call it a zip tie, sometimes I call it a cable tie. And not tugging on the wires, get that centered in position. Then pull this. Not too tight. Cut it nice and flush. We're going to get the snap ring on there. There's a snap ring groove. I'm going to put the snap ring on there. I can see the alignment pin in there, it's centered. So here's the snap ring going on. So when I was putting it together, this bearing kind of popped out. So I'm going to repress that bearing in. And it doesn't matter which way the bearing goes in. You can't put it in backwards. So put that there. Put this here. And press in the bearing. Center. Pressing in the bearing until it's flush. So I feel this. Don't overdo it. Test it. And that's a new bearing, so it's great. One important thing to remember is that the wire comes out the brake side. So now we'll work on the drive side. So it does not involve the wire. You have the freewheel mounting threads, and you have this side cover. You can't do this wrong. Put it in there like that, and this may very well need to be pressed on. So I'm going to go like this and see if I can press it on by hand. Put it on there nice and straight, and that's going to need to be pressed on. So these are the motor cover bolts, the side cover bolts. All these are the same same bolt for the all the flanges all the covers they're all the same exact bolt same exact length of a shank so i'm assembling the flange before i press it on there so now we're pressing on the drive side cover i've got sockets under here holding up the the motor cover and I'm using this as a sleeve so that it doesn't abuse the freewheel threads. Okay, we check this. It needs to go down about another two millimeters. I just want to make sure I can rotate that so I can line up the bolts. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is put some bolts in there when it's in position. And I want these, I want every single one of these bolts to be in there, threaded, not cross-threaded. So that one's not going in. So they've got a problem bolt over there. These are all happy. This one looks good. I'll press it down a little more and try the bolts again. Okay, now i got some room to work here. Let's see if this is going to go in. Now it's going in nice. A jiggle a little. Yep, threading in very nicely, not cross-threading. You don't want a cross-threaded side cover bolt. There's one hole back there that doesn't have a bolt. Let's see about this guy here. It's going in perfectly. Hopefully this one will go in nice for me. Okay, so all the side cover bolts are in there. And I'm quite sure that none of them are cross-threaded. I'm not over-tightening at this point. 
just taking up the slack because I can do the final closing with the press. All right, here we go. I'm watching that gap there. All right, that's enough. I think uh, tightening the bolts will be good enough from this point. So this is the brake side, the wire side. I fed the wires through this hole. This is a real tight fit. Very frustrating to do this. So one last check inside the motor. Uh, we already checked the snap ring is in there. You got the cable tie. I look around the bench, there's no missing parts. And when I put this in, it is a really, really tight fit. So here we go. Last time I had to use a hammer for this. So there it is, it's lined up. And I'm just pushing this down. And with the hydraulic press, it's doing really well at overcoming that pressure that the wire is putting on the axle. So I'm going to look at that wire, and the wire is doing fine. It's staying in place. And this is just going down really nicely. At some point here, I'm going to line up the threads. Now what we've done is we've put uh, side cover bolts in there, in every hole. And when I lower it down, I'm going to make sure that the holes are lined up. So we pressed in the cover enough to where it was down, but we could still rotate the cover. And then we put it on the bench, and uh, we checked that the cover was rotating freely. And we rotated the cover around and lined up the bolts using a star pattern making sure that the bolts aren't cross-threaded. Okay, so we've tightened the side cover bolts. It was a little aggravating getting those to where they were in without cross-threaded. Now I'm putting on this collar and the rotor mounting flange. Collar goes on first. Feed the wires through the collar. The rest of this is easy. The most aggravating part is the putting on the uh, brake cover, the brake side cover. So there's a little uh, relief there for the harness. And this goes on easily. Push it down flush, rotor mounting flange. Feed the wires through obviously. And then put some bolts in there and we're done. Here Lloyd is putting in the last bolt for the rotor mounting flange. And that will complete the task. Now we're going to build it into a rim. We're going to go right from this to that. Once he's got those tight, we'll get out the rim and the spokes. And we're done. Show us the motor, Lloyd. We got the 170 millimeter wide axle for the 170 millimeter wide frame.